Jeff Passon of ESPN back here on the show. How are you, Jeff? Richard, I'm well. Yourself? This seems far more out of control than the last time we chatted 10 days ago, Jeff. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? You know, I've, I've actually been around the Astros. I think this is my 11th day here. And uh, it's gotten more out of control than I expected, honestly. I, I didn't think that this was going to be a story that went away. You know, I was I was at the GM meetings in in the Phoenix area back in November and had heard that something was coming uh, in terms of the Astro sign ceiling stuff. And then the athletic story dropped the next day. And I remember talking with executives from the Red Sox, uh, with the Mets, and with the Houston Astros. And I said to them, guys, uh, this is going to be the biggest story since steroids, and it might be bigger. And they were all skeptical, and uh, it has exceeded my rather lofty expectations just in terms of the staying power and uh, of the inability of Major League Baseball to have this go away, which it had hoped at this point would have happened already, and uh, it, it ain't going away. Well, I mean, there, Jeff, you know, there it's are not... a lot of layers left here to this story that haven't even come close to being uncovered. No doubt. And I'm not, I'm not talking, Rich, about, like, other teams steal, stealing signs or anything like that. I'm talking, you know, the Red Sox investigation. Alex Cor is going to talk. Carlos Beltran is going to talk. Players are going to throw at the Astros. What's going to happen with that? What's the fallout going to be? You have a Major League Baseball Players Association that is – bifurcated by 29 teams against the Astros and the Astros just standing there alone wearing it day after day after day after day. What does this do? And I'm not trying to make sympathetic characters out of people who cheated at sports, but they're people who cheated at sports and you know, their, their lives are, are unbelievably changed because of this decision that they made and the human element of it, I think becomes an interesting story. Like this is just not something that anytime soon is going to be going away. Jeff Passon here on the Rich Eisen Show. By the way, you're spot on that this is bigger than the steroid scandal because there is no greater performance enhancer than knowing what's coming. Period. End of story. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I probably even said it to you. If I'm a pitcher, I'd rather be facing some guy with a trapezoidal head, you know, with acne coming off everywhere because they're hopped up on 15 different horse medications than somebody who knows exactly what's coming. Uh, I'd rather that be the case. All that said, the only way this seems to be maybe to be put to bed is if the commissioner changes in some way, shape, or form his punishment. And the question is, would the players who are so adamant about getting their pound of flesh that they're like Marqueca saying today that everybody deserves a beating on the Astros, would they be willing to, to tell the union to back off and not sue the league or file a grievance with the league if the commissioner removes the immunity that he told all the players that told him the truth they would have, Jeff? There is absolutely zero chance, Rich, that something like that is going to happen. No matter how aggrieved the players from the 29 other teams are, this reminds me of Alex Rodriguez when he was fighting his uh, year-long steroid suspension. You know, went into the commissioner's office, was banging his head on the table and just kind of acting uh, And the a union, you know, I remember Michael Weiner telling me this when he was alive, and Michael Weiner was uh, before Tony Clark, the executive director, Union, uh, probably the smartest person I've ever met. And Michael said to me, and this is a tenet that goes to all unions, a union is only as strong as its weakest member. And right now there are weak members throughout the Houston Astros organization who are getting absolutely crushed for what they did. And what they did was wrong and what they did was bad. And what they did hopefully never will happen again in the game of baseball. But the idea that the PA at this point and make them sacrificial lambs to satiate the bloodlust of their brethren, I just cannot fathom a scenario where that happens. You don't have a union if that happens. Simple as that. So what's the way out? Because as you point out, <laughs> no, no, because as you point out, you, you even said, you know, the Red Sox stuff is coming. Beltron hasn't talked. Cora hasn't talked. Uh, I mentioned at the top of the show, Jeff, that there's probably a member of the 2017 Astros that maybe in 2021 or 2022 will have a moment where the conscience will just weigh on them. Maybe they've, they're they going to have a kid, right? A new kid. They're going to have a kid for the first time, and they're going to look at the child yeah. and say, what, what will they read on the Internet about their dad? 
and and yeah. they're going to come out and say I was the one who pounded on the trash can against you, Darvish, and this is the way it went down. You know, like that's the, I'm yeah. just giving you an example. So what's the way out no, of this? I think, uh, you know, it's funny, Rich, because when I write critical columns about people, about situations, about institutions, one of the things I try to do is is to say, okay, I'm not just going to criticize here. I'm going to offer solutions. And right. and I feel like I feel like criticism without solutions is is empty and hollow and uh, just vacuous, right? I don't have good solutions to this because every solution seems to be contingent on the idea that players are going to wear it harder than they already are. And I just don't think legally that there is any way for the institutions that are involved here to make something like that happen. At the same time, I wonder what the public reaction, Rich, would be to something like stripping the title from the Astros. Would they see it as nothing more than a move to save face, especially considering Rob Manfred's been on the record saying, I don't want to go down that path. I feel like it's a slippery slope. If we take this away, what else are we going to take away? I mean, is, you know, he was intimating the home run record, like Barry Bonds clearly didn't you know, did the single season record as well as the all time record. Uh, while using steroids. And so if you strip away the Astros title in 2017, does that mean you have to go and do the same for Bonds? Uh, now, those are two separate instances, and I think you can argue that uh, the uh, what the Astros did, as you have, is worse than what Barry Bonds or any other individual did. But uh, the, the question of going out, making a bold and distinct move, and then having the public say that's still not enough, that's something that Rob Manfred simply does not want to do, and I don't blame him for that. Like, he's in a position right now, Rich, where he's got to do everything right. Like, this is a seminal time for his commissionership because right now the tide is against baseball from the fans, from the players, from the whole continuum of people. And Major League Baseball needs to rescue itself from that situation. And I listen, I wish I had solutions. I, I don't know what the best way out of this is. Jeff Passan of ESPN and the Honda Insider Report. Well, let's game this out, Jeff, because I think the commissioner's a lonely man. I mean, who, would he, who are his allies in this? One would say Jim Crane, who, who, who steps on his you-know-what every single time he opens his <laughs> mouth. I'm serious. Or, 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 or who? The players? The players who are who he gave immunity to, who I, I'm 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 wondering if there's even dissension inside the locker room of the Astros, right? I mean, we're, we're... no, no, there's there's not. Okay, I, I've been around I've been around here enough. There's not. Well, they what are... about what about the pitchers? What about the pitchers? I mean, Verlander won the damn the damn ALCS on his own arm in a way, you yeah. know, that year. I mean, what's he yeah. supposed to do after being acquired at midnight? of that trade deadline. He's supposed to walk in there and blow the whistle on everybody. I mean, what? A, so, so he's not sitting there pissed off trying to bite his tongue. That's what I'm trying to figure out here is that where, where's the way out where the commissioner can basically say, all right, here's what we're going to do. Whoever did, I found out bang, bang the trash can or use this to hit a home run. We're going to sit here for every single instance that I found this out. I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it out there. You, you may not be punished, but you're going to be punished by the information being in the hands of fans and your teammates and your comrades. What about that, so, Jeff? So let me, well, okay, so let me ask you, what, what rich is that going to solve? Because, and, and, and it might solve something, but I feel like right now, you know, I, listen, I, I will never say that being in the belly of the beast as I am now uh, is going to make me perfectly acute to what's going on outside. But I think I have a fairly decent pulse of what the public perception is right now. Yep. And, I, and, and, and it feels like the individuals already are all getting crushed and that more granular information about them is not going to, to make things any better. I think doing something like that purely exists for, for throwing meat to these, these rabid animals. And uh, listen, I'm, I'm not saying fans are uh, fans or ball players don't have reason to be angry. They do. But I think a commissioner at a time like this cannot do something just for the sake of perception. I think that is the most dangerous thing no, I, that I, you can do. I hear you, but the whole concept of the, the, that, that, that 
the players are going off scot-free, which is the verbiage I've heard some players use, um, yeah. th- th- that they're getting off scot-free. Well, nobody's sitting there and saying, well, the reason why they got off scot-free is because they told us about this, and the only reason why we know about it so concretely is because we let them get off scot-free to tell us about what happened. That's getting lost in everything. And if I'm the commissioner, I'm saying, how else would you want me to handle this damn thing? You know, so, so, so let's, let's go. Let's go over a couple things right okay. now, Rich. And yes. points to make. And I, I appreciate the fact that you're willing to have a conversation like this Great. because we we get we get so caught up in who's pissed off today <laughs> and what they're saying yeah. that that sometimes we miss the, the the really important details that are going on here. And and so you say the players got off free, right? I can tell you right now. The players did not get off free. The players didn't get suspended, but they did not get off free because their legacies, their greatest achievement, their their integrity, everything is coming into question, not just from fans on the outside who they, you know, they're fans. Like, so players get used to fans booing them, saying bad things about them, talking about their moms, whatever. No, this is your peers. And their peers are coming after them in the same way that fans do. So the idea that they have not been punished, uh, I, you know, I was talking with a player earlier today, Rich, who, who said to me very candidly, I would have rather gotten suspended. Huh. I would have rather gotten suspended. And, and he said that because he feels like if they got suspended that uh, the, the, the just uh, – the, the just desserts would have been given and the players would not be coming out time served. in the way that they are right now. Time yes, served. Exactly. Give me time served is basically what you're saying a player has told you in baseball. Yeah, but, Rich, but, but Rich, let me let me say this too. And I think this is, a, this is a really important point to make and one that gets lost because we don't care about nuance and don't care about law and don't care about the, the things that go on behind closed doors in smoke-filled rooms. Um, when a notice was sent out in September of 2017 saying that electronic sign stealing can lead to discipline for players, mm-hmm. it was incumbent on Jeff Luno and A.J. Hinch, the general manager and manager of the Houston Astros at the time, to pass this along to the players. Yes. That's what Rob Manfred, that's what he said in the letter. This was not done. And when this is not done, there, there is a tenet of labor law called notice. And what notice is, is it requires the employer to tell the employee when a potential disciplinary issue has shifted and what the potential discipline can be. When that does not happen, Rich, the ability to suspend somebody in this case all, uh, practically falls apart. Now, you can argue that if you're Major League Baseball and you do go out and suspend them anyway, knowing you're going to lose a grievance hearing, that you are putting it on the Major League Baseball Players Association then to stand up for these players who everyone knows cheated and try and get them off. And the thing is, they would have gotten off. Suspensions would not have been held up. I talked with four labor lawyers about this. I've talked with another one since they wrote the story that they could have gone out and suspended these players. While true, these suspensions would never have been held up because of the lack of notice. And, and that's a big part of this story, I think. That was a big of baseball going the route that it did yeah. when it decided not to suspend these players and to give them immunity. And that, in part, in large part, frankly, is why we're in the situation we're in right now where everyone is so angry. And, and you know what? Like, I expect fans, because this is such a granular issue, not to understand or not to take the time. You know, we have busy lives. I totally understand that. But for players, man, like... These are people in your union. This could happen to you, too. And so the idea that they haven't gone and, and taken the time to understand why there were no suspensions, I, I think, makes them look hypocritical in some ways. Well, Jeff, I love having this conversation with you for two reasons. One, because you can have it, and, and I love the back and forth with you, Jeff, and you're tremendous at what you do. And two, I want to talk about this more and more to try and take away – from the botched tattoo of my daughter that I have on my collarbone. I don't want to talk about it. I'm trying to make sure nobody pays attention to that, Jeff, you know? 
Oh, uh, you're so good, man. Not, <laughs> like I, I didn't know. I didn't know where the hell that was going. Oh, but yeah. That was not where I. I should have known. <laughs> like I feel. I feel very naive for not just no, telegraphing it's all that. Good. Jump it, jump in the route, and I just yawning into the end zone. But you know what? You got me. <laughs> no, and I did mean what I said about uh, the first part. You're great at what you do. Thanks for the call, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks, Val. Great right back at you. Care. That's Jeff Passon. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.